Okay, so this question, right, is a nine marks question. Uh, you might find that why is it so short and then it's going to cost you nine marks. Okay, so basically there's a lot of integration because it starts off with a uh, second derivative. So it started off with the second derivative. So in case you forgot the notation, so these are the equivalent. So fx will be y f prime will be dy dx, and then f double prime will be the second derivative. So, and the thing that you are trying to show is f. That means you actually got to integrate twice. So you got to be able to plan for it. So recall the, the notation first. So the whole question is actually very easy. If you are not careless, you'll find it's very easy. So, and the whole thing is uh, relying on integration of sine ax plus b and integration of cos ax plus b. So, that's why I'm writing the formula here so that it's easier for you to reference. So, of course, this one is not provided in exam. Okay, so I'm going to get from the second derivative to the first derivative. So, I got to integrate my second derivative. So I integrate, and I just integrate with the two formula. So you integrate super carefully, and you add a constant. So if you manage to integrate successfully, you will get marks rewarded for using the formula correctly. So this will be my f prime after integrating once. So you do need to find uh, the unknown for this. But however, if you take a careful look, the two pieces of information they gave you doesn't involve the first derivative. Both involve fx. So you actually couldn't do anything right now, except you just have to integrate one more time. So when you integrate one more time, you are using the same set of formula, sine ax plus b and cosine ax plus b, which I will not show, but you have an additional constant to integrate. So when you integrate a constant, you get a cx, and this time round, of course, you get another constant. So the other constant that I'm using will be a k. So the whole thing looks very confusing because you already have two constants. So by the time you integrate twice, you will come to the expression of fx. So by the time you integrate twice, you will have gotten something like this. So your job now is to find the unknown carefully. So they gave us two pieces of information. So I'm going to be using the first part. The first part means when I put in x equal to zero, the whole expression will become a zero. So I input all my x equal to zero and the whole expression will become a zero. So that's exactly what I did. So what you will need to do is you use your calculator in radian mode. So make sure you, you press up. So for me, I press out this value, I gotten a one. Then for me, I press out this value, I press out one by one. Some of you don't press out one by one. So sometimes you end up with a very ugly number. So I literally do it one by one so I can find my k. So I'm down one constant down already after using one piece of information. So to avoid confusion, I prefer to put this back into the expression. So I prefer to put it back into the expression. So I'm left with one unknown. So I'm slowly getting nearer to getting a full expression. So I put back the key. Then subsequently, I'm going to use the second piece of information. The second piece of my information require you to input the x to be pi over two. So I'm going to input all the x very carefully. I'm going to input very carefully all the x. And the whole expression will become five over six. So please do not press calculator one sale, wholesale. You will not be able to get the actual number. So 
I will usually press bit by bit. So this is how I press bit by bit. I will press this. It gave me a zero. I press this. It also gave me a zero. So then, of course, this one, I bring it over. So I leave the pi over two. So eventually, I can leave my answer in terms of pi. So if you are not doing it bit by bit, you will end up getting a chain of answers. So after I gotten my C, of course, I return my C back to the expression. So finally, I got a full expression already. So this is the full equation for fx. Then I'm trying to show. So I'm trying to put in the pi over 2. So do observe. You are trying to put in x equal to pi over, sorry, it's pi over 3. And you're supposed to end up with third. Of course, if you are supposed to end up with third, you are not expected to press calculator wholesale. You're supposed to try to link it back to some special angle that you have. So I'm slowly putting in all my x. So my x will be pi over 3. So I put in all my x very carefully. And again, I press one by one. Okay, I will press one by one. I will say it many times. I press it one by one. And then I gotten a third value. So some of you may be asking me, uh, but when I press this, um, let's say for example, you press this. Apparently it don't give you a third, correct? If you press this, it will give you a 0 0.866. So your calculator will never return you root three over two. So how are you supposed to know that it's a root three over two? So well, the trick will be you divide by, you, you can square both sides. You try squaring. So you square on your calculator, you find that it will give you a three over four. So you imagine you taking you take a square root on three over four. So you imagine you take a, a square root on three over four. That's a calculator trick that I always use. So imagine you do this, and that's how I know that it's root three over two. Okay, so you can do a calculator trick on this. And then you do it part by part so that eventually you get the root three over two, one plus root three over two. You cannot be pressing up everything at one shot. Some of you got this habit, you just input everything into the calculator. Then you'll ask me, how am I supposed to get the third? Of course you can't. Okay, so let me repeat. Do not press everything in your calculator. So, don't press this whole chunk into your calculator. It's not going to help you. You just get a chunk of decimal. Okay, so you got to press part by part. And also, you need to remember that your calculator has to be in radio mode. Otherwise, all this doesn't work out as well. So even though it's a nine marks question, uh, I don't think it's very difficult. It's just that if you are very prone to careless and your careless happen to be on top of it, you the whole question is very wasted. Okay, so I think it's quite a manageable question. You just have to be focused and be very mindful about color. In exam, you can actually write the formula at the side so that you can refer to and it helps you to minimize color mistakes.